My name is Mireille Sula. I'm the founder of Global Women. It's an international organization for empower women, and we mainly focus on two big topics: confidence and finance. So, Mirella, tell us about the title. What gave you the idea to start Global Women Clubs across the world?、Uh, it was.、Um, Something that didn't come overnight, but was a process and was a hole inside that was burning. But in the same time,、uh, it took a while to manifest exactly what I was meant to come and do in this world.、Uh, I was doing at that time my PhD in psychology and the topic is domestic violence and.、Um, While I was interviewing these women who had been going through this traumatic process of trying to leave an abusive relationship, always my my questions were: What makes a woman leave in an abusive relationship? Why a woman is not able to stop the abuse, to end the abuse, and just to to start a new life? It's freedom. And、um, after I、uh, finished my research, the results told me that there are two big components that keep women in that trap. One is、um, self-confidence, and the other one is kindness. So there are these two big reasons why. Why one of the big reasons? There are many reasons, but on the top of the reasons where. Because of lack of confidence and because of lack of finance, lack of money. So then I thought, okay,、uh, that's the problem. That's I have identified the problem. So how do I find a solution? And it's all about focusing on on the solution. But how, in the same time, I turn this into a movement that、uh, brings women together, not as Being seen as victims, or as, as a charity case, but as victories, and、uh, women who really want to rebuild their lives again, and also feel that they have earned it. So I've been working with、uh, many NGOs and charities for all my life since I remember myself, and、uh, I didn't want to go through the same routes. I wanted to to do something different. And I asked myself the same question: How do I feel if if I if I would be an abused woman? Somehow, if we identify、uh, all types of abuse, it, it's always a little sense of abuse when you come from a culture that is very patronizing, patriarchal, and、uh, very、uh, suppressing. I don't want to touch that area, but I ask myself that question. So, if I was an abused woman, especially in that situation, you really trapped, and you want to end it, or probably you have ended it because I interviewed women that have ended their relationship, and that that was part of the criteria of me interviewing. They had they had to end. They had to be women that have ended their abusive relationship, and my my whole research was about taking them through the steps of domestic violence. So the the criteria of my research was to interview women who have been going through all stages of domestic violence, and there are six. So I wanted to know when a woman has ended her relationship, her abusive relationship, how does it feel? How how where she is? So how how does does the life? The new life looks for her. How does the world connect with her? In what kind of mental space, place she is? So、um, it was a, a really shocking result to realize that most of the women deep inside told me that the abuse never ends because the trauma is always there. Because there is. Not that much done for women after they have finished the abusive relationship. 
And here I am with this idea. It's not just about how can you have your views, but also how can I not to fall into that trap, to avoid that, that uh, these kind of relationships. And um, as I said, I asked myself the question, what, what would I do if I, if I was in that place or if I want to avoid that place? Number one, I wouldn't like to see myself in a group of women who just talk about domestic violence because I tried it before and it, it, it was really hard to bring women in a group uh, to talk about domestic violence. And number two, it just felt like women want to show their strength. They want to show their power. And they know they have it, but if they lost that connection, they want to, to have that powerful place and safe place at the same time that allows them to, uh, to celebrate themselves, not just to go there and seek for help and seek for uh, for mercy, but to be there, to see themselves, how do they contribute. If women want significance, women want uh, recognition, women want recognition of their power and their substance. And this was in my mind when I thought, right, I know that I want to work with women. I want to, to, to turn it into a business group. If I want to see women flourishing and thriving and uh, living in abundance, we need to create that vision of abundance, not coming from a charity place for a charity case, but coming from a powerful club where women start living their future at that moment. So I wanted women to come, no matter in what place they are, to start living and loving their future at that moment. And uh, this is, this is uh, uh, what happened. Uh, I just decided I turn this first into a business club so women can come first learn how to build their confidence and by building their confidence how to grow their ability to earn money, how to increase their ability to make their own finance. And uh, as Kim Kiyosaki says, a man is not a financial plan. Most of the women that I have interviewed during my research, they were really dependent financially on their men and they were waiting for what their men can do for them, take decisions for them. And they, they were also women, they couldn't even buy food for their children until they get the permission of their husbands to go out in the supermarket. Or um, they met women, many of them, they, they had to wait until they uh, get their budget, weekly budget from their men, so they could manage that little budget to put food in the table for the children. Or women that they had their money, but their perpetrators were using their money. So all this inside me was burning until I just thought, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to start somewhere. I don't know how, I don't know when I can get there, but I know that this is what I want to do. I want to start a movement where women can feel that they are ready to start working in a new era, in a new path, a new direction of their life and build their confidence and increase their ability to make their own money. Beautiful. So now let's let's take you back in your journey of starting your first club. What was the biggest challenge you've had in initiating and launching that first one? Uh, and this is where I started. Um, I remember the very first meeting. I um, it was by invitation. At that time, I uh, had only the Global Woman magazine, and I had interviewed a lot of powerful women. And I gave a lot of thoughts. Where do I start? What is the best way to test the water that this can work? And. Uh, I invited 20 powerful women in my office in London to celebrate Women's Day. And I remember we had a, a round table and we 
we suck. They, they never met each other. But I met every one of them. And, but they read each other's stories in the magazine. And I wanted to introduce them with each other. But also, I wanted them to have the opportunity to introduce the work that they are doing. And so we can know who are the women that are in the room. So I, I shared my vision and said, look, this is, this is uh, my, my passion, my purpose, my new vision in life to share stories of women and to see how these stories can serve other women and how we can come to a, to a place that we deserve to be. And you are the women who have achieved a lot, you are women who have done a lot, you are, um, you are CEOs, directors, and very successful women that have shown the world that you are able to build things. So I, I just wanted to, to know their input. And I started with myself, I said, okay, let me start. And I told everybody what I was doing. I told about my research in domestic violence. I told about my passion that I have to help women empower themselves. Because this is where it starts. If women are empowered enough, then um, they will, even if they fall into the trap of a user relationship, they will be more able to react toward it and to find a solution quicker than, than it should that I have seen happening. So there are six stages of domestic violence. At least we can manage to pass these stages as, as soon as possible. Because the thing here is that uh, every, every woman can probably fall in that trap. It doesn't select you. You're in intelligent or intellectual or beautiful or educated or non-educated. It's so easy to fall into that trap. But the question is, how can we get out of that? And when I, st I remember when I started to talk about it, the woman that was next to me became emotional, very emotional. I saw some tears in her eyes. And when I finished, said, thank you so much for bringing this topic to me because today I, I look, I'm very powerful and I've achieved a lot, but I was there. I, I, I was an abused woman. I have suffered domestic violence and it took me such a long time to get where I am today. And in that room of 20, 25 women, half of them told me that they were affected by domestic violence personally or they know somebody that is severely affected by, by the abuse. And I just that was enough to tell me because at the end of the day we were supposed to come and talk about our business and empowerment and our strength but that meeting became so emotional we, we were crying and supporting each other and, and being very empathic and open and connected so that was the beginning that then led me to another meeting and another meeting and then we came with this mantra if you want to empower a woman give her a microphone because um, this is what I saw. At the beginning, uh, women were coming like, supposing that they're just going to sit there and listen to somebody and asking, who is the speaker? And you are the speaker. No, 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 I'm not the speaker. So you're a woman, interesting enough, a woman very successful in their business or career or um, achieved a lot in, in, in their career. So this is where everything started. And um, this mantra, if you want to empower a woman, give her a microphone, became the mantra of each woman. Because I have seen how a woman come at the beginning uh, with uh, fears of being in front of others and shining and putting uh, herself in the spot and uh, taking that visibility that she deserves that she never used. And I've seen how how scared they are at the beginning to to come and and share their story or share a message or or uh, connect with others by by just getting that visibility and then seeing their progress. How does that change from one meeting to another? And how does that woman build her confidence just by? putting herself in front of the others, having their, uh, her own voice 
but not only her own voice, but also an audience that listened to that voice. And that was a breakthrough for me, because I, this is what we need. We need women not just uh, to have their own voice. We, want, we need for women to have an audience that can listen to that voice, an audience that can empathize with that voice, can support that voice, and, and can uh, can keep uh, love into that safe environment that women need for growth. So this is um, this is the beginning, and since since then it never ended, and it's not, never going to end. And how many clubs do you have so far? In how many countries? Um, yeah, I, for uh, let's say uh, the first year, for about seven, eight, nine months, something like that, we kept doing this, and it was completely free. All women invited, but because the it it, it started to become very popular, and uh, women started to know about these meetings, and everybody wanted to be part of it. And I started to feel guilty because um, women were not happy, they were not invited. Until one day I came up with this idea, I said, great, now this works. And um, everybody's invited to your ticket. So I remember the very first meeting was sold out in 24 hours. It was just before Christmas, exactly two years ago, 2017, yes, <laughs> exactly two years ago when we launched the very first club proper officially business club and um, women traveled from different countries to come i remember one of the women traveled 22 hours by bus to be there and uh, i remember when i asked uh, where are you coming from did you wake up early because it's, it's 8 30 in the morning and um, women, yes, I come from Brighton, or one is from Paris. And one of the women said, I traveled 22 hours by bus from Germany just to be here because I couldn't find a flight ticket just before Christmas, very expensive, but it was worth coming. And this is how it really became so popular. And then and women coming from different countries say, do I have this club in, in Stockholm or Amsterdam or New York or Chicago or uh, LA or Vienna. So it just went uh, with the flow. And so here you are in how, about how many countries now? Oh yes. yes, here we are now. Yes, to come back to your question. Actually, at this moment we are talking about 30 cities around the world. We have 30 clubs uh, all over the world. 30 countries from a concept and you followed your gifts and your passion so today as as we close this amazing interview that took us a, a little bit of glimpse of how Mirella Sula unscripted her own life and to empowering women around the world to really step up into their purpose and their passion and who they are is what would be your legacy message to the world 50 years from now. 50 years from 50 now. 50 years from now. Um, I always say that the only creatures that never reach their potential are human beings. And uh, as human beings, we, we as women, we don't know how much potential we have. And my, my biggest thing in this moment is that how can we awaken up with more and more women to realize and recognize that there is so much potential inside that we can use not only for ourselves, it's not just about ourselves, but imagine what happens if we tap into that potential and we start using by empowering ourselves and how powerful can be this by sharing to contribute for the world and to, to uh, give this planet the strength that needs from us women, the emotional intelligence, the feminine energy, the, the in intellectual, the care, the love, the contribution, the significance, the connection, so much to keep. And that is the legacy that we can leave for the next generation and other um, young girls that come 
and celebrate what we have achieved in the same way that we celebrate what the previous generation has done in order for us to have this voice. And the last question is what's next for Mirella Sula? It's always next, it's always next level and uh, I'm always exploring and pushing the boundaries and, and I know I am here for a big purpose and uh, I want to use all my channels, the channel that is given to me to use it for other people and I want to build a global community of women, a genuine community where we really care for each other, we start understanding that it's a new era and it's a new opportunity for us to use this to move the whole feminine energy, the whole feminine system into the next level because uh, for the moment uh, we all are searching for a new direction and we know that there is more, there is more for us to give to each other as well and to support each other and we are creating a new culture that it's a genuine, supportive a mindset of women uh, being there for each other. And this is how I see the, the next step of myself, but all women who are part of this journey, that um, to see this global woman community in every corner of the globe, wakening up each other and shifting and lifting up each other. And uh, that's my big vision to make this uh, global woman community as uh, the big one of the biggest movement in, in this planet. And uh, welcome all other movements to come together and and be part of the whole. Beautiful. And can you let our audience, from between the podcast listeners and the television viewers, know the two big events that you'd love to invite them in for 2020? Uh, definitely we um, if you already uh, are aware about Global Women Club you can just search what is the nearest club near where you are so it will be really nice to see you as part of our clubs actually in 30 uh, different locations so you may be nearby the club if not we have the Global Women Academy where you can go and and learn a lot from world speakers and experts that share a lot of wisdom and knowledge. And we're also developing an app where all women around the world can come and connect together and, and show this alignment for not only each other but also to create a better world. And uh, the next two big events are Global Women Summit and Awards in London, 11 and 10, 11 and 12 of July 2020. And also the biggest one, 10,000 Women Summit with Success Resources and Veronica Tan, my, mama, my rich mama, too, uh, on the 10th of the 10th, 2020 in Singapore. So if you want to learn more, uh, it's so easy to find us, Global Women uh, Magazine, Global Women Club, Global Women Summit, 10,000 Women Summit, it's all there.